Welcome, welcome all to another episode of Bruise and Banter FC. I'm your co-host, Tar I'm Targo today, your red beard, I guess. But today's <laughs> episode quite, is all about quarterfinals. <laughs> That's right. We watched the FA Cup quarterfinals and we found out the Champions League quarterfinals who will be playing each other. We're going to be analyzing all of it, making our predictions for who could be crowned champions. And this is Bruise and Banter FC and it starts right now. All right, man. So this might be a bruise and banter first. Yeah, just banter. No just bruise. Just banter, no bruise. We had all the bruise for St. Patty's Day. So happy St. Patty's Day to all you listening out there. It was fun. It was eventful, but we need to take a hiatus for, for now. <laughs> we do, we do. It was fun. St. Patrick's Day, going to all the breweries, the pubs, going to the new Spokane soccer teams first opening game the spokane velocity that was a lot of fun watching them play they won 2-1 against uh richmond kickers so that was that was fun they did it was fun to see lovely weather couldn't complain couldn't complain no. No. but we got some some football to talk about man some yeah, european so. football champions league fa cup all of it but first a word from our sponsor Today's episode is brought to you by Acorn Hills Clothing Company. Sustainable clothes. So a little bit of breaking news. Yeah, today. man. Nottingham Forest deducted four points for financial fair play financial fair play breaches. This now puts them in the relegation zone where now Luton is in 16th place. I will take it. <laughs> or 17th place, sorry. So they're out of the relegation zone, yeah. They're out of the relegation point. zone. By That's point, all that matters. Yeah. Which is awesome for Luton Town. Not so awesome for Nottingham Forest. No. Originally, it was supposed to be six points deducted, but because they reported their losses at the first available time, apparently they gave them two points of grace there. So, four points. Still, though, that is the amount that puts them in relegation. Yeah. And they've, what, they've lost... What is it? Nine out of are all nine of their games this calendar year, including two late losses, one to Brentford and one to Liverpool. And then I, I guess they down. gave up a goal against Luton and the and yeah. So nine moments eight of for nine. The draw. Yeah. So they've only got one win in their last five matches. That's it. They got six wins all season, seven draws there. They're struggling. They're gonna be struggling here. You know, and it's kind of obvious that they got deducted these points, right? Like, you remember when they came into the Premier League in that 2022-2023 season, they bought 22 players, man. Set a record. Yeah. yeah. Most players ever purchased in one season. Which that's... And it's not like they've stopped since then either, so. No. No, they haven't. And then you were saying something about Brennan Johnson, about... Yeah, so apparently they had a chance to sell Brendan Johnson for I think it was like seventeen million less than they got from Tottenham right before the financial cutoff deadline. That would have got them essentially they would have passed every test and not been deducted four points, but they decided that was a low ball offer from Brentford and they decided to sell him two months later to Tottenham. Tottenham. So yeah. There's a reason he left, because he was a Definitely. I liked him at, at a Forest. At Forest. Yeah, and he's doing pretty good at Tottenham. I, I will say that. Uh, it would be interesting to see, though, what happens next week because Everton have their second hearing for pro profit, sustainability, financial fair play breaches as well, and they could have even more points taken than the, what was it, six that have already been taken from them. Yeah, yeah. So, had 10, got four back. <laughs> yeah, so we'll find out next week. If they get deducted more, and if <laughs> that puts Luton in an even better position, so well, if it's the same with Everton, that also puts them right into that relegation fight because they'll be on. They have twenty five points currently, so if they get yep. another four points deducted, like Forrest just did, they'll be, be sitting on twenty one as well. So yeah, should be should be fun to see. And then you know we got the Chelsea and Man City stuff coming up sometime this year. Who knows when that'll happen? I. The Man City, I think I've heard we won't find that out till the end of the season next year. 
Yeah, probably. So, but once speaking of speaking of Manchester City, there you go. Let's get to some Champions League matches, shall we? They played. They did. They did. But we're going to start in Bavaria as Bayern okay. Munich took on Lazio. They were down one nil after first leg. Came back and thrashed Lazio. Three nil. Yeah. Probably saved Thomas Tuchel's job there. Yeah. I mean, have you seen a more dominant performance in the Champions League this season? From any team or from Bayern Munich? From any team. Yes. Manchester City has definitely crushed some teams this season. Arsenal thrashed PSV. First game. You might remember that one. Yeah. At the Emirates. So, yes, there have been some thrashings, but in this round? Yeah. Probably not. I mean, again, Man City against Copenhagen. Yeah, I mean, that one, same scoreline, both matches, so. But, as for the goals, how good was Matthias Dillick's volley for the second, even though Thomas Muller stole the goal from him? Well, it wasn't going in, so probably not very good. <laughs> he struck it well, don't it get was, me wrong. He struck I was, it sweetly. I was not expecting that. I and it just that. takes that boop, little glance off Thomas Muller, man, <laughs> goes right to the net. But yeah, I almost felt bad. It's like, damn, that's too bad for you, Dillick, because he's right. running off. Like, he did score it. <laughs> and then Harry Kane with two poacher finishes. It's what we've known to expect from him for now. 36 goals this season. I don't Probably know if this more. is updated. Nope, he scored one at the weekend. Yeah, and Mbappe, I think, also scored this weekend. So, De Jong, I don't know if he scored this weekend. And then Victor, was it Gokeriz? Killing it, yeah, for sporting. Killing it, Yeah. So, I mean, all three of them, all four of them, up there near the top of the Golden Boot charts, I mean, I got to ask, who's your pick? Kane or Mbappe? Who do you think is going to win it? fun in the Bundesliga, man. Yeah. He, he set a record this past weekend. He has scored the most goals for a striker in a single season in his first season as a new player to the to the league. Yeah, and he's already eclipsed his total from Tottenham last season, so which I think was thirty one, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, I think he's at thirty one or thirty two right now. Yeah, yeah. In the Bundesliga, just and just in the Bundesliga. That does not yes. count <laughs> Champions League, so Yeah, and then another record, Manuel Neuer with a clean sheet, levels Iker Casillas' clean sheet record for the Champions League most all time. I mean, how, where does he rank amongst the greatest goalkeepers in this competition? So I was looking at this. Obviously, look at some of the greats. Iker Casillas, Gigi Buffon. I'm putting Neuer first, man. Yeah. When you look at the clean sheets, okay. he did it in less games to get steal the record, and he also had less goals conceded than all the other players. Yeah. So the least amount it took him the least amount of games to get it, and he let in the least amount of goals. Okay. So yeah, who I'm has, number one. Who has the most Champions League though out of all of them? Oh yeah, Casillas for sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Casillas as number one. I think Neuer number two, but only because of trophies. In not actual clean sheets, huh? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There has been some great ones, as you mentioned. Gigi Buffon should always be mentioned in that conversation. Been some great ones over the years, but congrats, Manuel Neuer, on yet another record for him. All right, next up we had Real Sociedad taking on PSG. PSG leading 2-0 after the first leg, win this one 2-1. And the Mbappe show continues, my friend, as he gets a brace and they cruise to the quarterfinals. Yeah, how good was that first goal, man? Oh, oh. very Henri esque, I will say. And then for, to see the breakdown from TT himself right afterwards, explaining what his he was thinking. Every young striker should watch that. Yeah, it was it was beautiful. It shifted onto that right foot curler. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. And honestly, if it wasn't for Sociedad's keeper, Ramiro, I think he should have had four in this match. He came up with some <laughs> saves, man. He was keeping Sociedad somewhat in this game. Yeah. And then, you know, we'll talk about the draw a little bit later. But, I mean, with 46 in his career in the Champions League, Mbappe goes above Didier Drogba for 16th all time. I mean, he's only 25 years old. 
pending transfer to Real Madrid, do you think he could break Cristiano's record of 141? No. Why? Because he would have to score 13 goals per season for the next seven years. Okay. Well, I, I will let me let me explain to you this new format and how many games they'll be playing. Because he potentially play two extra matches next season if he makes it to the final. Play eight group games. Max games you could play in the whole tournament is fifteen to seventeen, as six in the group stage and thirteen total in this season. So I think personally. He can. Will he? With that Real Madrid well, that's side. A, that's a BS could. answer you just gave me, man. Can he? Of course he could. I could too if I all of a sudden went to join a football team in Europe and was playing in Champions League. But well, I that's what I'm saying. He can. I want to hear, do you think he will? No. Obviously, every player playing in the Champions League can break that record. But I, I just, he? the only reason I don't think he will is just because injuries. And that's, that's what I'm saying. It would why. be it's hard to be that consistent for that many years. And, Will and he score be... that many goals? It's just it's difficult. And so no, I, I, I think I still think, I he'll, think be he'll, close, he'll do it. Though. I he think might he'll be, be close. close. Yeah, but who cares about being close? We want to know if he's going to break it. And I guess it'll all depend on you know how long he plays in Europe, right? That's like, another big factor. He'd yeah, be 32 if he did that for the next seven years. I mean, Ronaldo did it till he was what 36. Yeah, yeah, but he's. That so. outlying freak of nature, man, who did it forever. Yeah. Still and never it, gets hurt. So, All right, back to PSG as a whole. If they play like this for the rest of the tournament, how far do you think they can go? Depending on what well, we know who they play, I think they could get knocked out next round. Okay. They did get a very favorable half of their draw. So is it, they do have a chance of making it to the final. Depending they do have on- a chance. I will say Depending they have, on they have how, a good chance. Yes. But I also think, they, I mean, it's Champions League, man. It's all good teams left. So, Right. All right. Let's get to Real Madrid and RB Leipzig. 1-0 to Madrid in the first leg. Leipzig tied this one 1-1 at the Bernabeu. Odd approach from Ancelotti starting with four center midfielders. Should they have started Rodrigo in this match? Oh, he brought him on, and he made yeah. a difference. Yeah. Honestly, sh- I, Leipzig should feel hard done, man. I think they could have got something from this game and potentially right? progressed. Dude, they should have had at least one or two in the second half and scored at least one in the first half. I. It's just their finishing game, was man. so poor, though. I know Luis yeah. Openda and Benjamin Sesco are supposed to be two of the next up-and-coming you know, strikers. But with the amount of chances they missed, does this make you question their capabilities as a star number nine? So I know Sesco's pretty young. Openda is a little bit older, potentially. I mean, I will say I watched Openda score a filthy header for Leipzig over the weekend in the Bundesliga. But, (laughs) you know, as far as him making that next step from Leipzig to, you know, a top team in Europe, hmm. I probably don't see it, but he could. He, okay. he could if it, you know if you see some of this finishing become more consistent. Okay, putting but up I will numbers s- in the Bundesliga. I will say that he is putting them up. He is definitely. But one thing is for certain: this match was very physical, flying around everywhere, tackles left and right, pushing, shoving. Good on the ref for letting him play through it. Vinny Junior, though. Should he have had a red card? Should he? Push? I know like we... And it kind of slipped up, but... We posted it on our Instagram story, so make sure you guys are going out there and checking out our Instagram page, Bruise FC, our TikTok, Bruise Banter FC, our Facebook page and our Facebook group, as well as letting us know on YouTube. But, I mean, the poll was overwhelming. Every single person said yes. So, I think so as well. I... That was very blatant, and watching on TV, I have no idea how he, did. he got away without a red card. Yeah, it was, again, throat area, man. Can't do that. Yeah. And then, good to see Art Guler getting back, starting to be healthy. No, he scored a goal against Celta Vigo. Was that two weeks ago? Yeah. Something like that. 
I only watched one La Liga game this weekend, man. It was at Letty Barca, so couldn't tell you. <laughs> All right. So let's get to Manchester City and Copenhagen, where they had the same exact scoreline in both legs. 3-1. to 3-1. One. One. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's bow our heads in prayer for FC Copenhagen, man. Rest in peace to a wonderful Champions League campaign. Gave me a, us a team to cheer for. May they recover from this mauling and bless us again <laughs> with it next season. <laughs> I know, man. They played so well in the group stages with Bayern and Galatasaray, Man United. It was good to see them in it. Right. I mean, at least, you know, we got to see their away jerseys one more time. That's right. Yes, we did. So, yeah, I mean, Akanji with the first goal, what a strike it was off the corner. Uh, calamitous mistake by Grabara for the second. Yeah, man, guys shouldn't have eaten that popcorn before the game. He had some butter fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Got me with that one. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, other than that, did we think this was going to end any differently? Oh, no. Yeah. The only thing that ended different was uh, Matias Nunez's finger. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you not on youtube yeah it was, you should have seen that just it was funny just now yeah I, I will if you are gonna look it up i will it's a graphic graphic his shot. finger is sideways it's the, gross the wrong way <laughs> it's gross and speaking of sideways in the wrong way do these results make man united look even worse this season in the champions league i you know we're, we're bad yeah they, they were no. bad I'm City demolishing them over two legs. United losing and drawing against them in Copenhagen. So, But we know Man City is levels oh, above yeah. Manchester levels. United. There are levels to this game. Speaking of levels, we had uh, the top team in England, Arsenal, playing uh, FC Porto. Man, was this an intense match. Holy cow. Arsenal winning 1-0 from a Leandro Trossard goal to level it on aggregate. And then we went to extra time and penalties. What a gutsy comeback from the Gunners against a well-drilled and stubborn Porto side. And Arsenal finally showing their maturity in this match. But I, just, I have to give it up to Porto, man. They were sneaky good. I know you say a gutsy performance by Arsenal, but I think it was more of a stout performance from Porto. Yeah, I mean, both legs, I would say. It's looking for their one chance. They got it in the first match. Probably should have had it. And more goals than that in both legs, I would say. I mean, I don't know how. What's his name? The guy who scored the first one. Galeno. Oh, Galeno, yeah. How he missed that one off the post and then hit it over in the first leg. I, yeah, it's well, amazing. Well, it's funny. You saw the commentary. You've seen all the videos on socials now where Henri and Michael Richards, Jamie Carragher are all there watching the game. And Henri starts leaving before he even takes the PK, man. He's like, oh, he's yeah, going to miss. Final he's he's going like, to miss. I, there's a, he had the look of a man who was going to get his penalty saved. So, David Raya, man, does he, with this performance, just this one, does he justify replacing Aaron Ramsdale? Well, it hasn't only been this performance. I mean, you, you saw what happened when Ramsdale played against Brentford. So, yes, I think it's probably warranted. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I've ever seen a goalie dive that far in a penalty kick shootout. I mean, he almost crashed into the post he was so far. But yeah. first penalty shootout since 2016 in the final at Liddy against Real. And we happen to have two in the knockout rounds. We did. Arsenal winning in the round of 16 for the first time since 2010. And it doesn't get any easier from here. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, no. But speaking of not getting any easier, what did you think of Porto's coach, Sergio Conceição, accusing M Mikel Arteta of insulting his family after the match? I don't. I thought it was BS, man. I thought it was complete bullshit. And here's why. This is not the first time he's done this. Like, he he routinely does this. He did it against Pep. <laughs> he made the comment, oh, it must be a Spanish manager thing. I mean, there's also these other incidents that occurred in the Champions League. I mean, he said Thomas Tuchel did the same thing. It's when his team loses, basically. 
he says these things. He's so. a sore loser. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. And then something funny to come out of the match. I mean, I know you saw it when Leandro Trossard got substituted off walking past the referee. But do you see all the jokes about them looking exactly the same and being <laughs> they brothers? They like they're brothers, man. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, what's Trossard's brother doing here reffing this game? He's, right. And he was doing calls against him. Come on now. Right. <laughs> I believe that's a bit of a conflict of interest, but, you know, <laughs> I haven't seen anything to prove otherwise. All right, let's move on to Barcelona and Napoli, where Barcelona absolutely thrashed the Neapolitans even without some of their biggest stars and a makeshift midfield to advance. It was. It was yeah, very I mean, much a... Uh... They were missing Pedri, De Jong, Gavi. I think Gudevan was out for this one, too. Well, I mean, there was like a, was a 17-year-old, Kubarsi, Kubarsi yeah. playing defense, manhandling Victor <laughs> Osman. <Osimhen. laughs> I... <laughs> You had Fermin Lopez, Lamine Yamal, all teenagers starting in that team. Andreas Christensen starting as your midfielder. So, yeah. <laughs> Very makeshift. Yeah. But they looked a better team. For they sure. did. All matched. I mean, Napoli had one fantastic opportunity to level things up at 2-2 when Lindstrom's header missed in the 80th minute. Yeah, they did. That was a big chance. But all the goals in this match were fantastic. And Barca's third was vintage. Ooh vintage barca silky smooth passing man just to end it all off with a easy tap in yep yeah and then how do barcelona advance through the quarterfinals i know we're going to get into like i said before we're going to get into the quarterfinals and semifinals here in a little bit but what do they need to improve on to go into the next round of confidence Lewandowski scoring goals for one the guy's only got two goals this competition so, I mean, that's a huge one. He's their mm-hmm. he's their goal guy, man. He's yeah. not scoring very much in the Champions League. They cannot rely on these youngsters. The Fermin Lopez's, the La Mina Mal's, the Pau Kubarsis. You just can't rely on youngsters when experience is needing, needed in these types of situations. Yeah, because, I mean, Napoli has not been playing the best this season and they've been very wasteful in front of goal so i think better teams in the competition will challenge them a lot more and punish them and we'll punish them exactly yeah definitely all right on to our final quarter our round of 16 match we had inter and atletico madrid man was this one entertaining did not disappoint as atleti win two to one tying it and then it went all the way to penalties. What a game! But I mean, did you have you ever seen a worse showing for penalty kicks than what Inter did? <laughs> that was pretty bad. What's <laughs> funny is watching this game. I was, you know, because before this game was Inter, before this game was over, Inter had some chances to put it away. Oh, yeah. Turam missed a good one. I mean, even Atleti had a couple chances. I think the pie hit the post. And as soon as it was going to PKs, like, we got through extra time, I was like, oh, Atletico's going to win this. <laughs> I knew it. As soon as it went to PKs, man, I, I would have bet money. With Jan Oblak <laughs> as their goalie, he's he's going to save something. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I think it was Diego Simeone is now the first coach to ever win three penalty kick shootouts in the Champions League. So, I mean, that's all down to the tactics that he plays because – He's, I think he's also been in more penalty kick shootouts than anybody else. But, yeah, I mean, Memphis Depay scoring the ultimate winning goal for Atleti. I mean, this guy's been everywhere. He really he's has. Finally, he's been all over Europe, man. I know. I mean, Like, where has he been? PSV, Manchester United, United Lyon, Barca, Barca. Yeah, and Atleti. now Atleti. I mean, where's he going to go next? <laughs> Bundesliga. <laughs> All right, put your bet in there. He's got to finish the circuit. Hedge those bets. <laughs> RB Leipzig, <Yeah>. watch. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. All right. Who do you think was a better team in this tie, though? I mean, it did get down to penalty kicks. Inter winning the first leg, Atleti the second. Did Atleti deserve to go through, or should it have been Inter? I think I would have preferred Inter. 
if I'm being honest with you. I thought they yeah. probably were just about the better team. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree. I think Inter were the better team over the two legs. I mean, I feel hard done, but, I mean, that's the way Adleti plays. If you don't put away your chances, then they're going to make you pay for it and make you work real hard for it. And then I lied. We still have one more match. From the yeah, court. you did. Round of 16. Yeah, Borussia Dortmund, Dortmund and PSV. PSV. I'll be honest with you, I almost forgot that it was a game. Because I almost missed it. But Dortmund win 2-0, 3-1 on ag- aggregate. And Jaden Sancho scoring again for Dortmund. Proving Eric Tan Haggard wrong once Proving again. Proving him wrong, man. He also scored a, a goal uh, the weekend. So he's scoring. Three matches straight. Something. Look at him. Yeah, Marco Royce with a late goal after a very unfortunate slip by the defender. Were you more shocked that he was on the bench than that he didn't start? In this Marco match? Royce? I yeah. mean, he's been he's getting up there in age. He's been not starting a lot for Dortmund. But I will say he's definitely I think one of those players just everyone loves. Oh yeah. Like Oh yeah. I mean, what is there not to like about the guy? He is. He's just one of those like players. He's, Everyone loves. Poor guy yeah. has had his mis- misfortunes before major tournaments for Germany. He always seems to get hurt around the World Cup. Not just but that, but, I mean, he's had every world-class player he's played with leave him. And he's been very loyal to Dortmund, yes. So, very loyal. Yeah, one of one of the OGs. Very few left. Did you think in this match the better team went through, though? Yeah. Yeah, PSV had chances in this one, but... They did. Kobel failed them out a couple times, but Dortmund was a better team. Yeah, they didn't deserve to go through. So with that, Borussia Dortmund getting their hat into the draw for the quarterfinals and semifinals. Targo, how did it play out? Well, let's stick with Dortmund, man, because they now have to take on Atletico Madrid. (laughs) These games will be on April 10th and 16th. But is this really... I mean, I'll start with this one, because I think this is the game really nobody cares about. <laughs> Except that Letty and Dortmund fans? Yeah, I mean, I, I'll i be completely honest. I'm not going to drop what I'm doing to watch this match. But you got two teams where it's anybody could win. I mean, for Adletti, that's probably the best draw you could possibly get. They are the two weakest teams, I would say. Yeah. Out of every team left, so at least one of them will be in the semifinals. And with the way that Atleti plays and the way we've seen Dortmund play at times this season in the Champions League, it's anybody's ball game. So, who do you got advancing then between Dortmund I, and Atleti? I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick Atleti. I just think the way that they play, the way that Dortmund play, it suits Atleti a lot more. I'm going to go Dortmund. Okay. What? I want to be a proponent for attacking football. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, but I'm just trying to be realistic here. Okay, well, experience let's Experience versus not. I, I don't know. Dortmund got experience. In semifinals? They've made it to finals? finals? Yeah. Of the Champions League? Yeah. Remember when they recently. lost to Bayern Munich in the finals? That was, that was forever ago. <laughs> so was the last time Atletico were there. It was forever ago too, man. <laughs> this This is true. And they always lose. <laughs> that is true. Uh, but let's get to the other side of, I guess you could call it that group. The yeah. team that they'd be facing if they won. That is PSG and Barcelona. Can Kylian Mbappe finally get a Champions League? Can PSG get a Champions League? Will it happen? Or is this Barca team good enough to compete with these better teams? We mentioned some of the deficiencies they have. So who do you have winning and why? Well, so I'm going to say I don't think that Mbappe can win a Champions League with PSG since this is his last year with them. I don't see them winning it. But they do have a good chance to get to the final with a fair draw. But I'm going to have to say I think Barcelona are going to win it. Okay. Yeah. At least this tie. I'm not saying the whole thing. I'm not picking Barcelona to win the whole <laughs> Champions League. I'm going to throw that out there right now. Okay. But I, I, I'm going to pick Barcelona, and the only reason why is because at times PSG look like a disjointed group of individuals. Barcelona usually looks like a squad 
that play together. Granted, I mean, they seem to be, you know, have players dropping out left and right. So Dude, that could the very injury much... plague is strong in Barcelona right yeah. now. I mean, with a couple of weeks until the Champions League <laughs> actually is back underway, they could drop more players. So I I don't know if they, if they keep dropping players, I might change my mind. But as the squad is right now, I, I'm going to go with Barcelona. Okay. So. I'm also going to go with Barcelona. I think all around players, they, they, they might be better. I think their defense could be slightly better. And Lewandowski, he you know, scored a goal here against Napoli. He got a couple or one at the weekend against Atletico Madrid, where Barca honestly played really well and just destroyed Atletico 3 0. So, yeah, I think Barca's on the rise right now and could be seeing something special from them here. There you Potentially go. making it to this final. Because I think whoever Barca play, if Barca goes through against PSG and has to play either Atletico or Dortmund, I would pick Barca over them as well. Same here. Same here. I think whoever wins this game is probably making it to the final. Yeah, I would agree with that 100%. Okay. Well, let's move to the other side of the group where we have Arsenal taking on Bayern Munich. Last time Arsenal played Bayern Munich... In Champions League uh, knockout stage, they lost 10 2 on aggregate. Can Arsenal don't, finally don't get one over me, on them? Man, don't remind me. Oh, Can they finally so get one over on their Bavarian behemoths? <laughs> <laughs> Taking my own phrase from me, huh? I mean, if they're going to do it, this would be the time, wouldn't it? I mean, you got a Bayern so. team that has a very frail midfield, disjointed defense, a lethal attack, and a healthy Manuel Neuer. So. The way Arsenal is playing, I would say they're a much better squad than the last time they played Bayern in the Champions League. I think that the first leg being at the Emirates as well is going to be massive. Yes. If Arsenal only win by one, I don't know if they get through in Munich because I think that Bayern team will score goals they, in this time. Oh, dude. So let me just put it to you this way, not to be a, a downer on you, but Bayern Munich this past weekend put five past Darmstadt. They put eight past Mainz, three past Lazio, two past Freiburg, two past RB Leipzig. Yeah, but they, so they also they lost goals. one nil to Lazio. I just, so here's, yeah. So let me finish. So here's the yeah. positive for you, man. They conceded two against Darmstadt, conceded one against Mainz, Nothing against Lazio, but conceded two against Freiburg and one to Leipzig. So they they concede. They concede goals, but they also score goals. Yeah. So we'll see. Arsenal's defense has been pretty good what, in the I would, primary. I would league. argue one of the best in European football at this point. Number-wise, they're the best in the Premier League going forward. They've found their goal-scoring form since the new year, mm -hmm. as we've seen them put in five, six, past some of these teams in the Premier League. But we'll see if they can do it in the Champions League. That's that's where I'm I'm nervous because you it's know a whole a, whole another animal. Yeah. And there's a player on Bayern Munich that just always <laughs> seems to fucking score against <laughs> Arsenal, man. Every fucking time, Harry yep. Kane always scores Harry against Arsenal. Motherfucking Kane, every time, man. It seems like it's just inevitable. It I, I hate to say it. Whether it's a PK or some banger, I, I don't know what he'll what he'll score, but he's gonna he's gonna score one. Yeah. So I, I'm going to go, I think Arsenal pull this one out and I think it's because, I mean, Byron's fans are going to be suspended from the match at the Emirates. So it means you have 60,000 plus Arsenal fans. We've so yeah, seen so how loud suspended for the fans, the way they behaved at these Lazio game. And then the, the game before that. Yeah. So I, I think that will have a massive uh, reverberate through this match because we've seen how loud Arsenal can get at the Emirates, or at least the fans can, and how much the players feed into it. I think Arsenal will just win by enough in the first leg to squeak by and lose or draw in Munich. I'm going to say Arsenal go through because I think they have a better defense. Yeah. For that I, reason, I, I will say that. I think they go through. I also think their midfield is much better than Bayern Munich. So, okay, well, let's get to the big one, man. Real Madrid, Manchester City, 
Will Man City roll over Madrid like they did last year? <laughs> no, I don't think so. And it's because of one guy. Jude. One guy. Jude Bellingham. I, I think he's going to make a big difference. I think Real Madrid have to play much better than they did against Leipzig to stand a chance in this. Otherwise, I think it will end up the same way. They did not play very well against Leipzig. No, no and no, Erling not. Holland will put away a lot more of those chances than Benjamin Sesko did. Although he's also not in great form. So it should be interesting to see. Jude Bellingham, though. I mean, is this the the tie where he shows why he deserves a Ballon d'Or? He really does, man. I mean, I think think at this point he's a front runner. He should be. Yeah. But we'll see. (sighs) This Real Madrid team, man. I I don't know. Their defense is just so banged up. No Militao, no Alaba. I I hear Militao has a chance to come back for the first leg, and that Courtois will probably be back as well. So I don't see that happening. I don't think. I mean, they're coming back from ACLs. You want to face Man City? Coming back. If I'm Courtois, Courtois, yes, but not not Militao. Probably not. No. I see Man City rolling over Real Madrid. I see them, I see Man City advancing from this tie. I don't think it'll be as bad as last season, but I still think it'll be relatively comfortable for Man City. Okay. So, who do you have then going between Man City and Arsenal? See, this is this is a tough one. Because it's going to depend all on what form each team is when they play. Again, and right. I would like I mean, to this see is a long time. This is a couple yeah. months. Yeah, Some and injuries Arsenal or could happen, but put Arsenal on your, playing your future scene hat. You rub your crystal ball. Whoever Who wins at the Etihad on the thirty first will also advance to the Champions League finals. Okay, so who do you think is winning that game? Arsenal. So you think Arsenal will make it to the? I think finals? Arsenal is with the form of Erling Holland right now how their defense is giving up chances. I mean, we're going to get into their game against Newcastle. I just think this Arsenal squad and how they put teams under so much pressure in the final third, I would say they're probably the best team in all of Europe at doing that right now. I think that this City side will be exposed. Okay. And I don't think City can beat Arsenal over two legs. So in the final... By Barcelona, yeah. So an Arsenal... Barcelona rematch of the last time they played in a final together. <laughs> well, I have to disagree with you, man. I think Man City are going to beat Arsenal over the two legs. They have this experience. Pep has this experience. Arteta does not. So I think it'll be a Man City Barca final. Man City coming out on top. Okay. But you guys let us know on our Instagram, Bruce FC. I forgot what our tags were there for a second. TikTok, yeah, Bruce Van Seed, Facebook group. <laughs> Let us know. But now we have to move to the quarterfinals that actually took place. Not predicting the quarterfinals. That was the FA Cup. Yes. The Wolves, they beat Coventry. Coventry, 3-2. I mean, Coventry with two late goals, man, in stoppage late, time. Late goals in stoppage time. Shout out to American Haji Wright in the 90th plus 10 to get that winner. Fairy tales, man. This is what the FA Cup is all about. Yes. Then we had Man City just steamroll Newcastle <laughs> 2 0. Honestly, probably I mean, could have been more. Duh. <laughs> I mean, I will say Newcastle were a little unlucky. A couple deflected shots go in, but I mean, we watched that game together when we were nursing our hangover on Saturday. So, yeah, Saturday. This Saturday. Game was. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were watching it. It was on one half the field. <laughs> yeah. Really. Yeah, pretty much. Chelsea left it late against Leicester. Fun fact, Mark Kukurea got his first goal for Chelsea. Yeah, and it's probably the easiest goal he'll ever score, too. It probably will be. <laughs> but Chelsea, man, they were cruising 2-0 until the 51st when one of the worst own goals you'll ever see from Axel de Sassi. I, I will give him credit. It was a beautiful finish. Into his own net, yeah. But, yeah. He, <laughs> but it was, he like, I mean, it was 45 yards out. <laughs> it's a side netting. Yeah. 
<laughs> that was terrible. Terrible was so own bad. goal, yeah. Another funny thing that happened in this game was a Raheem Sterling free kick. Oh, not just that, but the penalty he had that got saved. Saved? I mean, the goalie almost dove past it. It was so bad. <laughs> it was like perfect height and just slightly to one side. Yeah. Like he didn't go to the corner. He didn't go down the middle. Hit the goalie in the kneecap. Terrible. Okay. Terrible. But yeah, that too- that free kick was probably one of the worst I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh I my mean, gosh. I, I want to ask, like, is he even a world-class footballer anymore? But I know the answer to that. But a better question is, should he even be starting for Chelsea at this point? I mean, his competition's Mudrick, so... <laughs> Who has been playing better lately. Better than Sterling? I don't know. I would almost like to see Madueke come in and play a little bit more. Yeah, Madueke likes the right, though. But I do have to shout out Steffi Mavidi's goal in this one. It was oh, oh. a stunner, man. Chef's Some kiss, stepovers. man. Oh, loved it. I wanted to say that I think DeSassi was defending him on that one too because he spun him inside out a rinse cycle. Rinse cycle, baby. <laughs> rinse cycle. Got him. <laughs> and then this game took a turn for the worse if you're a Leicester fan as one of their players got a red card. Yeah. That was in the yeah. 73rd. And then this really allowed Chelsea to kind of put the pressure on where they waited late, man. 92nd and then a 98th minute goal. Yeah. So the scoreline definitely flatters. And both of those goals were lovely as well. I mean, you got the Cole oh, Palmer the flick Wicked. and the Mad Weke one. Although I think it took a slight deflection, but still, it was a beautiful piece of individual skill. Yes, but I will say this was pretty unconvincing from Chelsea. I agree. So, I yeah. will see if they I, make it. Pretty much sums up their entire season. I mean, they beat the team first place in the championship, so <laughs> good for them. It's like beating Burnley. Like beating Burnley. <laughs> Probably not even as, as impressive as beating Burnley the way they play right now, man. <laughs> oh, but let's get to the big one. This one was a game that did not disappoint. Oh, what a match this was. Holy cow. Manchester United hosting Liverpool at Old Trafford. This one ended 4-3 after extra time. Ahmad Diallo with the winner in the 121st minute. <laughs> and would then get a second yellow for taking off his sh- shirt. Yeah, he, I, he, he said post-match. He the hold up. Yeah, he said post-match that he forgot he had a yellow card. But, I mean, what a way to take a bow. <laughs> it was. It was a late, late winner against one of your biggest rivals in front of your home fans. Yeah. But, man, Liverpool, they almost looked in cruise control for most of the second half because they went down early, and then they came back, got two goals before the end of the first half. And, honestly, it didn't look like United were going to get anything Mm-mm. until the one, the only, Anthony would come on and get an equalizer in the 87th minute. Your boy stepping up scores a goal for the first time in what five thousand years? That's what it, it seems, seems like. like. It it's at least his first goal this calendar year. He still hasn't scored a goal in the Premier League this season, but I think he's his second in the FA Cup. I will give him credit though, man. That was a brilliant turn and a brilliant finish. Good turn, yeah. Yeah, but I w- will say, did you see his reaction to being put at left back? He wanted time. nothing to do with it, man. He nothing. wanted nothing He's to do with it. He's complaining the whole time. Like, are you crazy? Rashford just tells him to shut up and do his job. He's like, bro, he's got a guy sent. To, <laughs> like, got a guy sent off. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you got like a minute left? You, you can do that for a minute, right? I mean, but credit I, to United in this game. They looked down and out. Honestly, I thought several times. Several times, and I think this Harvey match. Elliott, Got that goal in over the stop, not overtime, extra, extra time. time. Yeah, and I was like, okay, that's it now. But no, they've somehow found a way to to get a result here. So I yeah. mean, I mean this this game was it was a lot like I don't want to 
put it into American terms, but it was almost like 20 minute quarters. Like United played very well for the opening 20 minutes. Yeah. Liverpool destroyed them the next 20 minutes. The opening 20 minutes, the second half, Liverpool were in complete control. And then the last 20 minutes, United got some momentum, leveled the match during regular time. And then same thing in extra time. Switch to Liverpool and switch back to, yeah. Yeah. I mean, good credit to United. They looked dead and exhausted especially in that second half of extra time. But Liverpool, man, they've played so many games. They've been running, and they look like they had extra gas in the tank at the end of that. No quadruple for them, though. (laughs) 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 Klopp also said after the game that Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunez, and Cody Gagpo have all injury concerns. And I did see that Darwin Nunez is not leaving for international break. Yep. If those three players are out injured for, honestly, even a month, does that hurt their title chances? No, 100%. 100%. I mean, I what does that lead you with the front? Yeah. Especially the Darwin Nunez one. Because who does that leave with Mo Salah and, you know, Diogo Jota with one leg? Pretty much. Yeah. Jota's not playing. Uh, probably they've been putting Harvey Elliott up there on the right, maybe. Yeah. Move Sala to the left. I I don't I don't know. And even Sala in this match looked rusty. I mean, yeah, he got a goal, but he scored. He missed yeah. quite a few chances. So we'll see how this banged up Liverpool Liverpool team can fare. Cause if, I think if they have all these injuries, they they need these players to be healthy if they want to compete for this title as soon as possible. Yes. In the Premier League. So the FA Cup semifinal draw is Man City versus Chelsea. Does Chelsea stand a chance? No. I mean, yes, I guess they drew City. As much as the chance as you and I would be playing in that Chelsea squad playing Man I, City. I think I'd give them a little bit more of a chance since it is a one off match where anything can happen. But no, I don't think so. I think City Yeah. Steam put their roll. put the boat on the boot on the throat and press down hard. <laughs> Straight curve stomp in Chelsea now. Okay. <laughs> and then we have Coventry versus Manchester United. Of course, we will all be rooting for Coventry because Of course. Duh. Yeah. But do they have a chance against Manchester United? I will say I think they have a better chance than Chelsea does. I was gonna. I was gonna ask you that. Is Coventry's yeah. chance better against Man United well, than Chelsea? The thing is, is, City. The way that United has been playing this season, they're so inconsistent. We never know which team is going to show up and how chaotic their performance is going to be. And they like right? to counterattack, which I don't think Coventry is going to be looking to get at Man United. I mean, maybe. Yeah, and we've seen what happens when United plays those mid to low level teams in the Premier League where they're sitting back waiting to counter United and they don't do very well against that. So I think Coventry do stand a chance and we've seen how Man United fare against teams that wear light blue this season. So the one team in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there I mean Coventry's jerseys remind me of the city jerseys of like the early 2000s. Yeah. With the the stripes going down the side, so we'll see. I I'm very interested to see how that game plays out, and it would be massive have... for Coventry to make the final. So who do you have in the final then? I'm gonna go City and United. I want Coventry to make it. I will be rooting for them. I just think that they will do it. What you used to say? You want your your heart wants to pick Coventry, but your brain's picking Man United. Yep. Yep. 100%. And then, yeah, City over Chelsea. I don't, I don't really see how they beat them, but again, it's a one-off match. So anything can happen. So then who do you think will win the final? My heart hopes Manchester United. My brain says Manchester City beat them by three or more goals. Okay. Yeah. I I gotta go with City (laughs) as well. But, you know, according to you, City will still repeat a double this season. At least. We'll see. So, I, I, I think. Wrong. I hope I, I am think, on some parts of this. But... I think personally, this will be their only trophy that they win this season. 
I think they have a better chance of winning this in the Champions League. Yes, that's yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean they're playing Real Madrid for for God's sake. <laughs> Real Madrid are good. Yeah, they're not going to be a a steamroll. Yeah, and in the Premier League, I mean it's pretty much going to be if City beats Arsenal at the Etihad, I think they'll win every single match from then on out. So, like they usually do. Which would usually do give them the title unless Liverpool went out. So, well, it should be interesting. Final couple months to the club football that we get to watch. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell for our YouTube. Make sure to give us five stars on all your favorite podcast platforms. Get in on the conversation. We post polls on our Instagram, so make sure you're following us on Bruise FC. As always, check out the Red Bubble. Get the merch. We got lots of it there. Don't forget to check out Acorn Hills Clothing Company. Close with a cause. So, on that note, we love you guys. Thank you so much. As always, cheers. cheers.